Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking jig fishing. I've got a handful of tips for you that are going to help you catch more fish when it's hot. The jig is incredibly effective in the summertime. I don't have to sit and advocate for a jig. We all know it catches big fish. We all know that they can catch numbers of fish, but man, when it gets hot outside, a lot of people set that jig down and that is the wrong time to be setting it down. So today I've got some tips for you, a handful of different baits for different situations that are going to help you keep catching those jig fish and catch more fish as we head through the hot part of summer. Now, we're gonna go down a little bit of a rabbit hole with different baits for situations. So if you're fishing small waters, if you're fishing creeks, if you're fishing crystal clear reservoirs, I've got some baits for you. If you're fishing just standard bass fishing like this, I've got some things for you. And if you're fishing that heavy cover, I've got some things for you. But if you don't wanna go down the rabbit hole, I'm gonna tell you right now, right off the bat, completely honest, you can do all of it with one jig if you have to. If you were only going to have one bait, and I'll link this bait down in the video description, exact weight, exact color, exact trailer. If I had to go anywhere in the country and somebody said, bring a jig, I'd pick up the same jig every time this time of year. So this is a pitching jig, it's an Arky style head. If you've watched any of our jig videos, that does not surprise you. That pitching jig, half ounce, can go anywhere and do anything. The go-to color, which is a muted green pumpkin with some standard darker pumpkin in it, it's a beautiful color, paired up with a green pumpkin style trailer, can be adapted to anything. Now I went with a tramp stamp colored trailer. That's half green pumpkin, half black and blue, because this is summertime. And again, I want a jig that can adapt to anything. So I can fish it green pumpkin side up, and it's a perfect match to my jig. Or I can take that trailer, and I can flip that thing over, because I got to the lake and I discovered the water's a little cloudier, Maybe the grass is a little thicker. And now I've got that black blue side up and I've got a jig that will fish in that more stained water. It'll stand out a little bit better. So half ounce pitching jig, tramp stamp trailer will carry me through summer. Now with that said, it can do everything, but it's not perfect for every situation. And that is why I have these other jigs here. I've got three other styles of jig for you. Depending on the fishery you're on, one of these is going to help you really dial it in this summer. Let's start heavy cover and then we'll work backwards. So let's go the heaviest, thickest cover, big fish or deep water ledge fishing because this jig can be adapted for both. Then we'll work our way towards the ultra finesse. So this time of year, the fish that are shallow are burrowing into cover. They want to be in the shadows. They want to be up here where they can get out of that hot sun. They can set up and they can be comfortable and they can feed around that cover. They don't have to go anywhere. There's bluegill up there. There's bait fish up there. There's crawfish in that grass. They can eat all those things without being out just roasting in the sun. So we know that, and that is why we go shallow. That's why people throw top water. It's why we throw Texas rigs. It's why we throw reaction baits. A lot of people right now will throw a Texas rigged creature. They'll just go down the bank, throw in a little lizard or something like that, and catch and fish. Well, the jig gets a bigger bite. Now it will still catch smaller fish, but when you come across a great big one, you are more likely that that fish will pick up the jig than that they'll pick up a smaller creature bait. So a big jig, five eighths to three quarter ounce flipping jig is where I turn. See a flipping jig has a pointed head. 
That is what you want if you are fishing grass. Now, that is not what you want if you are fishing wood. If you're fishing wood, that will wedge into a branch in the wood and it will stick and it will be stuck bad. But if you're in grass, it comes through and it just splits that grass and it comes through magically. It comes through almost as well as a peg Texas rig. It really does. So a flipping style head is 100% where you want to be in that shallow grass this time of year. And again, I throw a heavier one, a 5 eighths to a 3 quarter, because I want it to fall hard. I want to get a reaction bite out of those fish. And then I'm going to fish it with a trailer that has some kick to it. Either a pack a chunk senior, a rage chunk, that guy from Reaction Innovations, that kinky beaver, where it'll actually kick. Now, this can be adapted. So heavier grass, you can flip it right in the grass just like you would punch. With a jig, you need a little bit more weight than you do with the Texas rig. So say you're flipping a half ounce jig up in that sparse grass, or I'm sorry, a half ounce Texas rig, you wanna go to a 5 eighths or a 3 quarter ounce jig to do that same thing. Because the skirt is bulkier and that weed guard is bulkier so it will catch on its way down through a little bit so it'll fall slower. We don't want that slow fall. We want a fast fall and a reaction strike from those fish. Also, the trailers kick so hard that they will slow down that fall as it's going through the cover. So again, a heavier head than normal will get you more bites. So, fishing grass, you're dialed. But you can also take this exact same jig and go where most people would go out to the ledges. Go out to those long tapering points, get out there in the current if you're on one of these river systems. Go out to that stuff and you can take that same three quarter ounce jig and you can fish it out there too and you don't need to turn around and tie on a three quarter ounce football or a three quarter ounce pitching jig. You can take that one jig and adapt it from ultra shallow out to super deep, catch both groups of fish. And these jigs with that same kicking trailer on it are awesome for stroking a jig this time of year. So if you're in the shallow, we're fishing that cover. But if you get out on that offshore structure where those fish are stacking up and feeding, we're not talking about just slow dragging that jig. I'm talking about stroking a jig, which is let it hit the bottom, reel down, and I give it two hard, almost hook sets, two hard pulls back to back, and then let that thing fall. A bass just blew up over here behind me. Soon as you feel it hit the bottom, reel up that slack, two hard pumps, let it fall. And you'll get right to the top of that second pump and a fish will just slam that rod. It's the same fish that you would catch on the hair jig, same fish that you would crank, F same fish that you would throw a lot of those traditional offshore techniques for will eat the jig if you're stroking it. But when you're doing that with it, you're throwing something that those fish have not been seeing and you can get a bite when those fish are shut down and don't want to eat those other offerings. So again, one jig that will fish both ends of the spectrum. Now, more of that traditional fishing. Are you a guy that's on more of a, a reservoir type lake? Maybe it's a dock lake. A lot of guys this time of year turn to the shaky head. The shaky head is incredibly effective going down the bank. It's incredibly effective on dock pilings. If you want to try something different, try a finesse jig. Finesse cut skirt, ball head with a, I call them dead action trailers. So you got basically two styles of trailers, trailers that kick and trailers that effectively do nothing, but they create a profile. I call those dead action. So something like a smallie beaver on the back of a finesse jig, and you're going to throw this in the exact same place that you would normally throw your shaky head worm. You can throw it on outside structure, no problem, but where it really shines, where I really like it, is fishing around docks on those little shadow lines. Because again, 
fast, the hotter it gets. They're pulling into that available cover. They set up and you know where they're going to be. You don't have to make 20 casts between docks. You know that if there's shade up there, they are on that shade. So you go dock to dock to dock and you pitch every piling. Boom, 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 boom. There's a bite, stick them. Doing it with a finesse jig, again, it's a different presentation, but here's the important part. It tends to get a bigger bite. So if you're going to be out there baking in the sun, roasting yourself, trying to catch a bass, you might as well be trying to catch a great big one. Now, last but not least is the finesse guy. And this can be smallmouth, this could be spotted bass, this could be river fishing for largemouth and smallmouth. This can just be clear water. Is your reservoir clear? A lot of people in the summer turn to true finesse, Ned rig, drop shot, Nico rig. Don't forget to pick up that little finesse jig. And not this style finesse jig, we're talking the little guys. We've got three that we use, that little peewee jig. We just started talking about this Nishini jig super thin skirt, little double tail grub on there. I paired up for this. Or if you want tungsten, that little tungsten Kitek jig. These small guys, I typically pair up with a trailer, again, that will kick. On a big jig, in open water, a trailer that kicks is too much action. Not in grass and not when you're stroking them. But if you were just fishing down the bank, I like more of a dead action. That's why I went dead action on that finesse jig. And it's why I told you if I could only have one jig, it would have a beaver on there. Again, that more dead action. But the little guys, those guys are so small. They have such a small presence that I like for them to kick. I want them to catch those fish's attention. Whether I'm fishing a small stream in the kayak, or I'm out on the jet boat, or I'm just on a reservoir where the water's a little clearer, and I just am not getting a ton of bites, turning to that small jig can get those fish. The nice thing is these little jigs have little tiny hooks. So you can drop down, you can finesse. You can set this on six or eight or 10 pound line, and you'll get way more bites than if you were trying to throw a standard jig on 12 or 15 or 17 pound line, especially in that clear water. So you can really drop down to finesse gear to get more bites, to get those lethargic fish, you know, outside fish that maybe that reservoir doesn't have any flow at all. And maybe there isn't a lot of shallow cover. So your fish are sitting on rock and they're just sitting around. They're not schooled up. You've got a fish or two on a point. You've got to go point to point to point to point to point to build your pattern. A jig with a little bit of action to it is a really good way to pick those one-off fish off. Because again, you're not trying to fire up a school. There's not 20 of them or 50 of them sitting together. You just catch those fish and you're on to the next one. Don't overlook that jig when you want to catch those fish and you're tired of throwing those same finesse techniques because you might find that there was a big one down there with them. Now, one other tip for you, this time of year, really any time of year, don't worry about making your jigs and your trailers match. Get that out of your head. Now, they look nice when they match, they really do, but it's not a requirement, okay? They look nice when they're matched, but what about when they're completely different? What about when you take a green pumpkin and stick it in there with that brown and that orange? What about when you take a green pumpkin and black jig and stick a bright chartreuse trailer on it? Or that go-to and stick that black and blue on it? Don't worry about matching. Get a handful of jigs in some of those really good colors. And I typically fish, I mean, if you look here, yes, there are some different colors here, green pumpkin brown, green pumpkin orange, maybe cinnamon green pumpkin and black blue, green pumpkin chartreuse. Now there are exceptions. There's some black blue or some black blue purple in there. But for the most part, I'm fishing a jig with those really muted colors. 
the reason why I do that is that then I don't have to carry every single color. I can take that jig, I could throw a green pumpkin or a green pumpkin red trailer on it and I'm set. While I get to the next lake, it's murky. I grab that black blue trailer or that tramp stamp trailer and I'm set. So you can adapt. It's easier to just buy a handful of trailers in three or four colors and just throw them on to that similar jig rather than having to own a jig and a trailer for every situation. So don't get hung up on making a match whatsoever. You can put a bright chartreuse trailer on the back of a black jig. You can do anything you want. In the right conditions, those fish will pick it up. The important thing, jigs are incredibly effective in the summer. You want to adapt it. You want to dial it in for your fishery. So did one of these sound like where you're fishing? We're talking heavy cover. Maybe we're talking ledge fishing. Maybe we're talking docks. Maybe we're talking finesse. One of those will fit the circumstances that you face where you fish. Take the right one, apply it to your fishing this time of year because it is hot. Those fish are either gathering on outside structure on hard bottom or they're gathering up in the shallows around cover for the shade. It's one or the other. You can adapt a jig to those two circumstances and you can catch a lot of fish and when you cross paths with a great big one, your odds are way up that they're going to eat them. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.